One in your fives. So this is the English for Tuesday. Let's have a slurp of my tea. In a massive mug, said the boss. Ha, <laughs> doesn't mean I'm not definitely not the boss of the house. Uh, right, so, punctuation. Mr Cooper said, I miss my class. So, the reporting clause actually at the start of this sentence, but you still have the same punctuation. So you have a comma after the said now to show that there's speech coming up. Inverted commas, so speech marks around I miss my and class. Full stop at the end. Simple as that. The boys' toilets were always very clean. So that's not one boy and lots of toilets. That's going to be a plural possessive. So it's lots of boys. So the apostrophe just goes after the S. And the last one, the cat's paws were always really sharp. I've put the Comma, uh, the apostrophe in the wrong place, remember? Correct, wrong or missing. So it should be in between the T and the S of cats. It's one cat's paws. See that? That's a really common mistake. When we've looked at apostrophes and we've, we're, we're getting there with them, we start putting apostrophes in the in the noun that's plural rather than the, the, the noun that we're talking about. Okay, like the subject of the sentence sometimes. So it's the cat's paws. So it goes uh, in the cat's one. Um, Hi friends, it's been quite sunny, except for yesterday. Should be that one, except. That one's except as in you accept something. Now, hopefully I have not missed out any letters. I promise you, year fives, I check these. Every time I make them, I check them. I write it out, I cross off the letter. I don't know how I'm missing letters out. Let's have a look. Now, solve the anagrams of these two words. They look tricky, and I'm going to completely admit something, Year Fives. I have put down the piece of paper that I used to create these, and so I can't work them out myself. <laughs> I found some, but I can't find them all. I'm trying to remember right now what they are. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, found them. That was close. That would that was very close to being embarrassing. So, wait, yes. <laughs> that first one is insecure. And the second one is inactive. What I suggest you do with these is hopefully you should all have your spelling journals with you. Um, I would have a look, I would flick through the pages and see if you can work out what they are. What I am doing is they're from the same list every t every day. So today's were off the, the list that was, I think it was an in prefix. So they're always from the same rule. I might put that, I might make that clear next week. I'll put which, you know, the rule that they're, they're from perhaps. Well, that might make me too easy then. Anyway, so insecure and inactive. Well done if you got those. I've just had to check what they were. Identify the subject and verb. So, the dog barked, well the dog is the subject of that sentence, it barked. Dave fell, Dave is the subject and he fell. Making clear that a sentence can actually be two words. It doesn't mean the biscuit is a sentence. Yes, we've got a subject, we haven't got a verb. The is a determiner to tell you it was th that biscuit, the biscuit I'm talking about, but just the biscuit isn't a sentence, it's not a complete thought, you've not told me anything about the biscuit, okay? Whereas Dave fell, well, Dave fell, didn't he? What a wally. The flower started to grow. So the flower is the subject, and grow is the verb, because you could have the flower grows, or the flower grew if it was past tense. So flower is the subject, grow is the verb, okay? To be fair, started, to start, is also a verb. Um, so, on to the task for today. Now, I do know some of us, um, through parent emails uh, or, or through you guys telling me, that you're sometimes finding the English either really quick to do or quite tricky to do. So I found another mouthful of tea. Now, I totally understand that because you're not surrounded by everyone else talking about the work as well. You've not got me in my ear 
at me in your ear, should I say, or me writing examples or hearing examples from everyone else. So it is, it is I, I understand guys, it's tricky, but you've got to imagine that these are tasks that are in school. You know, the journey that we're doing each week, I'm giving you a tech, I'm giving you a waggle, and then I am giving you tasks to build up to it, to help you with planning and generating vocabulary. So, the tasks aren't dissimilar to what we'll be doing. Why not do it like this? So the task is, start thinking about a bank of vocabulary, and like you started thinking about a bank of language and vocabulary yesterday. Yesterday's task, you should have been, you should have um, had a look through mine and written down things from the wangle that you might like to borrow. Today, you've got a few more ideas, and I want you to make, and it does say make a mind map for each one. Okay, so it's very clear what you need to do here. This isn't a five minute task. This is something to take you 10, 15, 20 minutes perhaps. I've just sketched out a very poor drawing of a sword. I know some of you really, really love to draw. Why not draw some of the things you might talk about? Draw the sword, draw the sword in the stone, draw the setting, you know, sketch it out and then create the mind map. So, you know, depending on what you've drawn, you don't have to have added the detail. In. But remember in class, you can start off really simple. So you might just start off with uh, a golden pattern. Maybe there's a golden pattern on your sword. Then that might develop to actually, let's, like, let's make that better. Um, ooh, encrusted pattern. Maybe for pattern, you want to say um, ornate, which means very delicate, or maybe maybe you want delicate um, words for for the sword. This is the hilt of the sword or the handle. Maybe the blade, steel. Maybe you've got a steel blade. Maybe you've got a made-up word for it. Maybe you've got a different element, a different element that's made that makes up your 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 sword. Um, what does it do? It glimmers. It shines of it shines of power. Ah, I don't know. Made that one up. Um, your thoughts during the storm. You've got when you find it thoughts. You've got thoughts. You've got during the weather. Or you can do what we normally do, and you just have what do I see? What do I hear? What do I touch? Feelings and emotions, which is a bit more broad, and you can get more of your ideas down. But You've got lots that you can describe here. You know, absolute, absolute important ones. You know, the bare minimum. You're going to want some description on your setting, your mountains, the weather, the snow, the wind. But in that setting, what do you see? What do you hear? What are your emotions in that? Okay. You're also going to want to think about you. What, you know, tell the reader something about you. What do you see? As in, what are you wearing? What can you hear, obviously? That goes to the setting again. What do you touch, even if it's just your cloak, as, you, as you're trying to warm up? Or when, it, when you get to the sword? What are your feelings and emotions? I need another colour here. I've just got on a roll. So, the setting is a main thing. You are a main thing. And then you've got the sword. Okay, what does it look like? When you get there, what does it sound like? Not the sword itself, what does the surrounding sound like? You're gonna have loads on touch and absolutely loads on emotions. So there's loads of different ways you can do this. You can either go crazy, draw loads of things out, draw each thing that you wanna describe, which I think some of you would love doing that, you know, colour it in, get, get it really popping off the page and that'll help you describe it. Some of you might want to to do little mind maps of everything. Some of you might just simply want to do see here, touch feet and feelings and emotions. But these are your three main things. Get things about the setting. Get things about you. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? What are you feeling? And then the sword. Don't think, also think about where the sword is. Is it, is it in a cave? Is it, is it, is it simply around the corner like in mine? It's, it's untouched by the snow. Okay, and I want lots of vocabulary. Okay, these can be individual words, these can be phrases, powerful language, whatever you come up with. And don't forget, on the post from a couple of weeks ago, 
all your wordsmith wendy words are on there um i think it's in the week one stuff so just scroll down to week one and you've got links to all the vocabulary that we've used in year five and that would be very useful as well so i look forward to that feel free to send me photos of these don't just send me the photo of the um the best right you know send me some photos of this what get some ideas going okay i can always put them on and share them with other people so good luck with that enjoy get your brains flowing and really get some powerful powerful imagery and powerful thoughts going good luck with that